and welcome to Showcase, TRT World's daily arts and culture program coming to you from Istanbul. In today's special edition, we're going to take a look at art therapy. Throughout the centuries, mankind has always felt the need to create. Be it a painting, a song or a sculpture, art has always been part of our lives. A universal language that transcends all barriers linked to ethnicity, nationality or beliefs. But what are art's healing powers? Although the beginning of modern art therapy is often associated with the late 18th century practitioners, its true roots date further back in time. The Egyptians encouraged people with mental illness to engage in artistic activities. The Greeks used drama and music for their healing properties. Renaissance philosophers proposed dance and imagination as an essential part of the well-being of all individuals. However, one of the most interesting and earliest holistic approaches to how we can heal by art was in 15th century Turkey. The setting was what was once the capital of the Ottoman Empire, Edirne. There is a hospital which can hardly be described either with words of mouth or pencil. There is a small dome on six thin marble pillars like a crown. The craftsmen placed a flag on a kind of iron stick polished by pure gold on the very top of another high dome. One of the windows overlooks a small garden with roses and trees, while the other one looks to the fountain in the middle of this big dome. This carefully and painstakingly constructed hospital is home to many rich and poor, young and elderly, who suffer from various illnesses. This is how, in 1652, Turkish traveler and writer Evliye Çelebi described the hospital named after Sultan Bayezid II in the Turkish city of Edirne. Built in 1488, the Ottoman Darushifa, or clinic, didn't just cure patients with innovative surgical techniques or natural medicines, but also with beauty and arts, particularly people affected by mental disorders. You know, at that time, the psychiatric patients were not uh, well treated in Europe. Uh, many people uh, thought that they had devil inside, and, and sometimes they want to, to, to burn these patients. Here, uh, in the Ottomans, uh, the modern, uh, that time's modern medicine, they tried to help the, the patients, especially the psychiatric patients. Uh, the treatment issues, uh, they tried with music, musical therapy. Starting in the 15th century, as the world was suffering from plagues and deadly conflicts, the Ottoman doctors in Edirne drew from the advances in Islamic medical research and used aromas, occupational therapy and music to treat their patients. Dr. Levent Asturk has written a book on the subject. We learned this from uh, the chronicles of Evliya Çelebi. Uh, he wrote that uh, on certain days of a week, uh, some uh, music instruments are played uh, and psychiatric patients uh, listen to this music. Uh, this was a complementary uh, intervention. Uh, there was a medical treatment and uh, together with medical treatment, they also used music. The musicians in the complex played what are known as traditional Ottoman makams, or melodic modes. Modern-day research has found these musical compositions to have a healing effect on patients. There are uh, almost 5,000 uh, research on music therapy. Uh, uh, only uh, several of them used uh, such uh, makams. Uh, one of them used Buselik and Nihavent Makam and it showed that uh, it may uh, reduce your blood pressure. Another study uh, showed us that uh, Husseini Makam can uh, reduce your uh, stress hormone levels. So we have to uh, create our own evidence for our traditional music. Then we can uh, use it in therapeutic purposes. The Sultan Bayezid complex operated for 400 years and was shut down in 1877 during the Russo-Turkish War. 
It's now a health museum managed by the Trakya University and open to all visitors. If it wasn't for the Turkish Health Ministry's recent push to endorse traditional music therapy, its wealth of knowledge could have been lost forever. Do you know today medicine is improving day by day? We got new drugs every day, we got new surgical techniques. I'm a thoracic surgeon also. We are using these modern techniques. But besides these modern techniques, we need help from the classical treatment methodologies. As Evliya Çelebi wrote, In accordance with the saying, there are two kinds of science. One is the science of religions, and the other is the science of the human body. Each of them is interested in a field of science and searches for a way to heal the suffering of the human. Traditional Ottoman music therapy is not just a thing of the past. It lives on in Istanbul. A physician working in the intensive care unit at the Memorial Hospital has been playing classical makams to his patients for over a decade. His name is Erol Can and this is his story. I'm a physician with three specialties and uh, I'm working at the intensive care unit of cardiovascular surgery in Istanbul. From the last 20 years, uh, I'm making a music psychotherapy for my patients. And for the last 12 years, it's uh, live music. It was in Bulgaria nearly 30 years ago. I was uh, at university and our chief uh, invited the musicians from a conservatoire for uh, make a concert to us and to our patient in cardiac surgery. Uh, it was in the foyer, but the patients from uh, intensive care units where I was uh, working uh, uh, hadn't the possibility to hear this concert. So I decided to transfer this kind of uh, music therapy to the patients in intensive care. The medical effect is uh, depending on the of music, or depending on the type of the music. And it depends on the patients on, uh, also. And uh, I suggest them some kind of music, and I'm asking what kind of music they are found. Uh, and this is the right uh, prescription for music. Therapy, it is not therapy, it's psychotherapy, musical psychotherapy. So music uh, influences the psychology of the patients. And the psychology by some hormones from the brain can uh, diminish the high blood pressure, can diminish the high uh, heart rate, can diminish the uh, pain and to ensure more deep breathing and so to uh, arouse the oxygen level. The aim is to uh, influence the uh, psychology of the patient, uh, to show him that there are people uh, who are caring for them uh, and uh, wants to make everything to be patient, to be healthy and happy.
therapies using movement are another way of healing and tapping the potential of creativity. The Tamalpa Institute in California integrates dance, visual arts, performance techniques and therapeutic practices in what it calls the life art process. We attended one of the workshops. Postures, gestures and emotions. Slow steps, sinuous movements, and words in search of a connection both with ourselves and those around us. This is the life art process. The life art process t teaches us that there is an inherent connection between our bodies, our emotions, and our mind. Each of us as human beings are capable of understanding deeply our own self and expanding our consciousness and our awareness and then being able to live a life that is more with more vitality and more aliveness. U.S. dancer Anna Halprin wanted to use dance as a healing and transformative art. She founded the Tamalpa Institute in the 70s and began promoting the life art process after a drawing she made literally saved her life. She had drawn a huge life-size self-portrait. And in that portrait, in the lower part of her body, in her, in her pelvic bowl, was this black or dark gray kind of circular shape and she didn't know know what it was so she went to see a doctor and the doctor diagnosed her with cancer so it was really through her drawing and dancing the drawing that she decided to make that doctor's visit and then she was diagnosed with cancer then after that diagnosis diagnosis she then used her own techniques of drawing and dancing and movement to work with her cancer until it went into remission. The life art process harnesses the artistic process to explore and deepen people's relationships between their creativity, psychology, and social life. The goal is to help them express a full range of emotions. We also express, use creative expression, dance, um, performance, singing sometimes. Uh, we use drawing and also creative writing. And so all these different modalities are being used simultaneously. And, and through that, these different streams of internal wisdom and really external wisdom as well inform us and then through that we're able to make more informed choices. Raising people's awareness about their emotions and how to express them through arts and movement empowers them. What people go home with typically is a great a deeper understanding of their self. They realize that they have their own resources internally, that we don't need to get external resources to help us in our lives. As Anna Halpern says, dance has the profound power to heal the body, psyche, and soul. And we're now joined in the studio by Bihtar Yasin Nkaya, who's an expressive arts therapist and serves as the chairman of the supervisory board of the Turkish Art Psychotherapy Association. Hello and welcome. Hello. Can you tell us why art therapy is so inherently important? Mm -hmm. Art therapy is uh, really an empowering method that humanizes the medical experience and uh, whatever illness that an individual may be facing, uh, they are going through a difficult treatment procedure that needs to uh, have rem keep reminding them of their wholeness and integrity. 
as a mm -hmm. person. So they are not just a sick individual, but they're a whole person with a physical, emotional, and an intellectual aspect to themselves. Right. Where does art therapy fit in with other kind of treatments? Mm -hmm. Well, when we think of it in the context of uh, cancer care, it's one of the complementary and integrative modalities. So while mm -hmm. the biomedical treatments are taking place, it's really important to complement uh, these difficult testing, treatment, uh, and other procedures with something that reminds them that they're a whole person. And that's something that relaxes the tension uh, and the fear, anxiety they're, uh, they're feeling as they go through these difficult treatment procedures. So it's one of the alternative, complementary, integrative treatment modalities that serve within the hospital experience uh, while they're inpatient or outpatient. Mm -hmm. So what are the underlying principles of art therapy? Mm -hmm. Well, the most important principle is that you don't need to be an artist to be uh, involved in art therapy or to react to the healing benefits sure. uh, that you gain from making art. The words beauty, aesthetics, harmony, these are redefined in the con uh, context of expressive arts therapy. They are not exactly the same thing as they are in the fine arts. So it's really important to be sensitive and not as important to be skilled to be involved with art therapy. Right. Uh, if you're a client or a patient who is uh, participating in art therapy, we, uh, the therapist asks uh, the client to just tune into their senses as they are shaping the material and just feel, uh, smell, look and imagine as they are shaping the material. So if mm -hmm. you do that, I'm sure what you do will be experiencing what's pertinent to your life story and you will be sure to discover resources that help you overcome your challenges, whatever they may be in your current life situation. Mm -hmm. Well, is art therapy for everyone? Is there a certain type of patient that responds better? Maybe you get better results with them? Well, I think nonverbal expression works mm -hmm. with everyone, really. Right. Uh, as long as uh, they're in a stable mental position, I really recommend art therapy uh, for everyone, uh, including young children undergoing through medical treatments or children right. with developmental delays to adults who are facing uh, psychiatric uh, or other medical conditions, to geriatric population who are dealing with uh, neurological traumas or degeneration, de degenerative processes such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, there is something that art therapy has to offer uh, for, to everybody. This is my personal belief. So here we come to the most important question, I think. Mm -hmm. What is the unexplored potential of art therapy? Mm -hmm. Can art heal us as a whole? Well, I think it's really important to be specific about this question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think art, making art has, generates healing powers. Mm -hmm. uh, but doing, uh, attending art therapy or uh, art in psychotherapy are different modalities. Um, of course, art can help us generate a greater sense of well-being. Um, it can help us go through a difficult psychotherapeutic process. Mm -hmm. I'm also pretty certain that art can be a way uh, that um, helps conflict resolution between groups that are having historical problems with each other. Oh, that's an interesting one. Yes. Yeah, Anna Halperin actively used art as a way to bridge different, different populations that are set separate and in conflict mm -hmm. by their history. But they, uh, they, um, with her work using dance, she was able to bridge and make peace between these uh, different communities and uh, they could uh, go beyond their assumptions about each other and really contact with each other on the fresh, neutral ground of, uh, ground of art making. Oh, wow. So, so not only healing, but peace as well. Peace and yes. conflict resolution. I think peace mm -hmm. is a very big word, but conflict, conflict resolution. resolution. Yes. Well, Bihtar Yasin Kaya, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Art 
therapy is also being used to tackle the challenges of a conflict-ridden world. In Istanbul, trained mental health professionals from Project Lift are offering traumatized Syrian refugee children a safe environment where they can express themselves through art, music and movement. They have an ambitious aim to break the cycle of trauma and violence and give the kids a chance to be kids. The exodus from the war in Syria has been of epic proportions. Almost five million people have fled the country since the outbreak of the civil war in 2011. What most of us don't know is that one out of two refugees is a minor. Two out of five are under 12 years old. Their futures could be in jeopardy, but there's still some hope. And it's coming from the arts. Project Lift is designed for all children ages between 6 and 12 who have been through extensive trauma and um, at the moment we're focusing on Syrian refugee children because this is one of the biggest challenges that we're facing as a nation right now. Most children here in, in Istanbul are not getting the help that they need because there's not enough opportunities but when they do there's a lot of different um, modalities that can help them I could say. Um, the one that we're using is a mixture of art therapy, dance therapy and music therapy with a more um, evidence-based model which is skills for psychological recovery so we're teaching these kids how to be more resilient. The severe emotional shocks suffered by the refugee children could easily mutate into violent behaviors. Yet drawing, singing, dancing and acting offer them a chance to express their feelings in a different way. Art is an international language that everybody has access to and self-expression is really important because being self-aware of how you are behaving makes you a more empathic and more compassionate human being, I think. And being involved in the creative process gives you hope and also, also helps you problem solve because you're looking at things from a different perspective. Art therapy offers psychological and social support and is now a part of traumatic stress recovery programs around the world. Although we may think of it as inessential, creativity has the power to heal and it could save the future of these refugee children. I see a lot of results in the children. One of the parents said that my child broke out of the prison that he was living in it. And that's, that's really big. The children are getting this chance to be children again. They're running around, they're playing, but they're learning the social cues and the rules throughout this play. And they're learning how to be a team and how to be a community again, how to trust one another. The transformation is amazing from day one to day three to day five. You see that they're growing. What were once drawings of bombed mosques, wounded friends and destruction have been turned into colorful jellyfish, flowers and houses. The costumes of jugglers and clowns have replaced the fatigues of rebels and soldiers. And a rap song has put the children back where they belong, at center stage. We explored art and its healing powers on this edition of Showcase from TRT World Istanbul. I'm Muslim Shiten, thank you for watching and see you next time.